Hi everyone, it's Mike here. Thanks for joining me. Today I wanted to share with you just something I've been experimenting and playing with over the Christmas period. Now I've been watching quite a few videos on just abstract painting, not journaling, not necessarily mixed media, but just abstract painting and it's always intrigued me. Um, so I thought that I would actually have a go at creating my first few pieces myself. So this is what today's video is all about. I'm going to share with you one of the first little pieces that I've done um, while I've been experimenting. So I'm just going to switch the camera over to overhead so you can see the piece that I've created. There we go. So this is the first piece that I've done. Now it's only uh, it's about, about 9 inches by about 12 inches so it's not a very big piece but it was all done using uh, acrylic paint and I have added in a little bit of book text as you can see but this is the first piece so I'm not sure whether it's complete yet whether it needs something up here or maybe something down here just maybe a little quote or maybe a little saying or maybe just a few words I don't know it doesn't look completely finished to me yet but there you go um, first attempt really so let me know what you think. Should I do more? Should I carry on? Should I stop and call it a day? I don't know. You let me know in the comments below. But uh, what I'll do, if you're interested, I will insert the process of me creating the canvas for you now. So I began by wetting the canvas. I've just got a little spritzer bottle and all I'm doing is just spraying the canvas lightly with the water and allowing it to sink in into the fibres and then I've just taken a palette from my palette sheet pad and I'm just going to add some titanium white paint and some Mars black and I'm just going to mix those together a little bit and then apply that to the canvas as my base coat at the top of the canvas. So this is a process of exploration. I had no real idea of what I wanted to create until I actually started it so it's pretty much stream of consciousness while this is being created. So now that I've mixed the paint all I'm going to do is bring the canvas back and I'm going to spread that now on the canvas with the palette knife. I'm going to um, keep use of brushes right down to a minimum this. I want to try and do this without using a brush very much at all so I will do it later on but for the purpose of doing this it was really just see what we can do with the palette knife. The reason I'm not using brushes on this is because I wanted to keep the paints looking quite choppy and, and blocky, not blending smooth. I really wanted that kind of rough texture kind of feel to the canvas. So here I'm just adding some more of the titanium white and I'm just blending that out with the palette knife. Uh, as I said, not using any brushes and I'm just applying the paint as it is and in between each application I will clean the palette knife off because I don't want any cross contamination with the paints. This is the deep turquoise and uh, all I'm going to do again the same with the palette knife is I'm going to just now spread that with the palette knife right the way across the bottom and start to blend in those colours with the knife.
So I'm now going to add some pieces of torn book text, but what I'm doing first of all is I'm actually soaking them so they're completely wet. Now the reason I'm doing this is because they will immediately grab into the paint. Um, I'm not using any matte medium, I'm not using any glue at all. I'm just allowing the water from the um, paper to, to hold and grab into the paint that's underneath it. In case you're wondering where the water is coming from, I have my water pot for my brushes, which is just off camera over to the left. Now I've laid a row of book text across the centre of the canvas, I'm now going to add some, um, some vertical strips because I wanted to get some height to this as well. So I wanted to cross over the main equator, if you like, from the blue into the grey with the book text to give it some kind of, um, some kind of continuity. So now I'm taking the palette knife and I'm just going to try and um, add a little bit of that paint just around the edges of the book text, just to blend out the harsh lines of the torn edges, just so that it, it moulds and blends a bit more into the, um, into the actual canvas itself. And then as you can see, I'm dragging the paint with the palette knife up into the, the grey. And again, I'll be cleaning the palette knife off to make sure that I'm not dragging any of the white into the, the grey into the blue and vice versa. So I will get a little bit on it, but I try as I might. Um, it's unavoidable to get too much, but it's a blending of the two colours. So it's the blue moving into the, the, the white and the grey and the grey moving into the blue. It just adds movement. And you may be wondering why I'm not using my normal overhead camera to do this. It's because I'm not in the craft room doing this, I'm actually doing it on the dining room table. So the camera is actually on a tripod just over to my left, looking over my left shoulder. So this is Thalo Blue and I'm going to just put a little bit of the Thalo Blue onto my palette paper and then I'm going to run the edge of the palette knife through the paint and then just apply some thin lines. Now I could have done this with a credit card or a piece of card, but I wanted to use the, the spatula, the palette knife, as much as possible for everything on this page. I'm only gonna use a brush um, for very, very minimal amounts of um, decoration. So as you can see, I'm just adding in some vertical lines and then when I'm happy with where everything is, I will add in a few horizontal too. Okay, so I'm done with the palette knife for now, so I'm just going to give that a clean off so it doesn't dry on there because nobody likes a crusty knife. And I'm going to bring out a, a metallic colour now. I'm going to use some copper. Now I'm using the copper because I thought that the canvas needed just a pop of colour and the, the copper really does go with that um, deep turquoise paint. So this is the reason why I wanted to use that rather than gold, because it's a bit more orangey, uh, and I think it works better than gold. So rather than adding swathes of the copper paint, I'm just going to add some small blocks or highlights, if you like, using the copper. And I'm just going to add some small blocks and then add in a couple of vertical lines using the paint just to mirror the horizontal and verticals in the, the phthalo blue and also with the book text.
So I'm just going to bring the palette knife back out again because I noticed that there's quite a lot of the paint had gone over the bottoms of the um, the book text and the paint had started to settle into the recesses on the canvas. Now, because there's nothing underneath the canvas, it, it did actually sag a little bit um, in the middle and it started to pull the paint back into it, only very subtly, but I could tell just from where I was sat that that was starting to happen. So I was just kind of rearranging the paint, if you like, to make sure that it didn't all run um, into the, 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 the center. So here I decided I wanted just to blend the colors a little bit more from, from the top into the base. So um, I thought, well, actually, a little bit of cross-contamination won't do it that much harm. So I thought, well, it'll also help to kind of um, blend the two colors together to give it a kind of stitching, if you know what I mean. So now I'm reaching for the Viridian, which is a kind of grey, blackish green. Now I wanted to add a little bit more darkness to the bottom of the canvas. So again, I've just added some of the paint onto the palette knife. I'm just going to um, smear some of that dark colour across the bottom of the canvas. Now this to me helps to ground the canvas and, and actually give it um, a top or a bottom, if you know what I mean. It kind of um, cements it that this is the right way up for this canvas. And the only thing missing now from the canvas is the obligatory white splatters. And that is where I decided to call it a day. Now, all I needed to do or wanted to do now was just to um, bring the color from the front of the canvas now down onto the sides of the canvas to make it so that it, it doesn't have that white border. So here you can just see me blending the colors from the front, uh, from the top, down the sides of this very shallow gallery wrap canvas. And then I'm gonna call it complete. So this part of the video isn't exactly um, riveting. So what I'll do is I will just speed through right the way to the end so that you can then see the finished product. And because I couldn't resist it, I'm just going to add a few more um, dribbles of copper paint. And then we're done. Well, I hope you enjoyed that little process video of me creating this little canvas. So, as I said, I'm not sure whether it's finished or not, whether it needs anything else, but you know, only time will tell. Well, that's it for me for today. Um, if you've enjoyed the video, please remember to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, you can do so by clicking the button at the end of the video. That's all from me for now. I will see you all again very soon. Bye for now.